Hello and welcome to our demystifying 5G video series. Today we will take a look at the clock and LO architecture of a 5G base station. Let's take a look at this chart. We see here digital analog and the analog digital converters need to be supplied via corresponding sampling clocks. And I would like to introduce Steve Gutierrez from IDT. He has brought today a, a corresponding board that has such a, a sampling clock generator. I also would like to welcome uh, Matthias Helwig as an application engineer for our oscilloscopes. Steve, I see on the board many, many um, connectors uh, with many, many signals. What about the time alignment of these signals? Well, Martin, time alignment is absolutely critical for a system of this size. The 8V1N and 880 has 18 outputs, and it provides these clocks to the ADCs and DACs. So the alignment is done through the JESD 204 B and C standard. That standard provides for a sysref clock, which is routed to all the receivers with the same phase delay. And the different clocks are then routed to each receiver depending on what frequency they need. The sysref clock is sampled on the incident rising edge of the clock that the receiver is using. So for this example, we want to illustrate how the clock generator has the ability to adjust the phase of the sysref signal. So for this example, we have set up the board and this device is running with a sysref signal and is providing different output frequencies. In this example, we will be looking at one of the output frequencies, which is 491.52 megahertz and 983.04 megahertz. So we have set up this board with different outputs and a sysref clock. So we want to take a look at it in the equipment. Matthias, can you show us how this is set up? Sure. We see a stack of two instruments at the bottom. There's a SMA100B. The SMA100B has a clock differential output running up to 6 gigahertz. It has a very fast rise time to provide a good clock source for the board. On top of that, we have the RTP, which is the RNS performance oscilloscope. We connect on channel one, the sysref, on channel two, one of the sampling clocks, and on channel four, another of the sampling clocks. On the display, at the top, you see uh, the acquired waveform. You see below a zoom window. In the zoom window, a little bit better, you see the sysref and the two sampling clocks. You already notice that the sampling clock uh, is of different frequency. If you compare channel two and four, here it's color coded in blue and green. And at the bottom, we have a measurement of the delay between the sysref and the sampling clocks. And you can see here, if you look at the mean values, we have something like 4.7 picoseconds between channel two and channel one. And we have something like 12.8 uh, picoseconds for channel four and channel one. Steve, is this a good value? Matthias, that is an excellent initial setup. Now per JESD 204 B and C, we need to provide a setup time so the sysref must lead the clocks. So I am going to adjust the analog setting on the sysref. Matthias, what's the new phase offset now? First, let me reset uh, the values, statistic values, and then we can read out uh, the data. The mean value for the delay channel one to channel two is now 43 picoseconds and the delay for channel one and channel four is now 51 picoseconds. That means it's increased by 39 picoseconds. Excellent. So that means that the clocks are now set up for the receivers. So Steve, we have seen a 36 picosecond step on the sysref. Do you also have other um, delay stages on your device? As a matter of fact, we do, Martin. 
The delay that we looked at was the analog delay on the SysRef output. In addition to that delay, there's also a fine delay for the SysRef. And for the clocks, there are two clocks per channel. And for that channel, we have a precise digital delay. So that gives us a range from 36 picoseconds all the way up to 8 nanoseconds. So I want to show the change in the fine delay. So if I, it's currently set to 254 picoseconds. And if I, if I set it to zero, then we can observe a phase change in the SysRef clock. Matthias, can you please show us the results? Sure. I changed the setup slightly now. We captured the results. So you see here in the RTP that we're using the channel one, the SysRef for the TIE measurement. And as a reference to that, we use the input clock on channel three. We essentially now used the chip select as an external trigger. And uh, we triggered already. And we can see here a jump in the TAE track function, uh, the jump has a step, has a size of 246 nanoseconds, and it appears roughly 12 milliseconds after the change of the chip select. Steve, does this meet your expectation? Just as we expected. This is excellent. Steve, thank you very much for doing this video with us. Thank you very much for bringing the board. Also, big thanks to Matthias for doing the measurements with us. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time soon. Bye-bye.